because I didn't start the recording. So the recording has now started. So I'm going to share my screen again and I'll go back into Lean Coffee Table on my side. Now, I'm sharing my screen here. You can see my version of Lean Coffee Table. And when we're going through this, we will allocate time to each of the questions. And when the time runs out, I'll stop sharing my screen. Otherwise, we'd be all clicking on the wrong place because you have get to vote to whether to continue on with that discussion or whether to move on to the next topic. So I'm going to give this a minute or two for everybody just to add their topics in. So any questions that you have, just add them in there. Just give it a minute there. And don't forget, no question is a stupid question. So don't be shy if you have the question. Chances are other people might actually have the question too. Okay, some interesting conversations. Okay, so everybody also has three votes as well. So if you can read through all the questions that everybody's put in and then Vote on the question that you'd like or the topic of discussion that you'd like to hear of most. And once we do that, we can start the discussion, sort them in order of votes, and we can just go through them then one at a time and have a bit of a discussion around them and see what's going on there. So. Good day, Paula. Sorry to disturb. I just join the call earlier on and get to introduce myself. Uh, I'm from Cape Town, South Africa. And I'm what, bro, how long are you involved in crypto? Uh I'm fairly new to this space. I've been I'm new to I'm not I've been in the IT cybersecurity sector for nearly four years. Um currently new to the whole blockchain and new crypto space but I'm eager to learn and see where it takes me. Excellent. Well, welcome. And this is definitely um, a group that meets regularly and can answer any questions that you have along the journey, because I tell you, it is quite a journey. Now, I just um, switched them around now to put them in order of votes. And what we can do then is just go through them one at a time. So the first one is... I just can grab it and pull it in and we will give it five minutes. And the first question is discuss a discussion on what tokens are considered not a security under the eyes of the SEC. So who introduced this question? You did, Rob. Come on off mute there and... They're still on mute. You gone, Rob? Did we lose you? Okay, I think we lost Rob. I was going to get him to actually introduce the question. Seems he put the question is. So it's a, a discussion to start with on what tokens are not a security. Are you back with us, Rob? Yes, sorry. <laughs> I lost my connectivity ish. I don't know what's going on in the back. Sorry about that. That's okay. Do you want to introduce that question and why you asked us? Uh, it's just a hot topic at the moment, regards to um, what's going on with the XRP case and um, obviously the. Uh, the American uh, Security of um, uh, Commission, well, I forgot what they call themselves that, but uh, basically they're suing the XRP. Um, but just recently, they've, they're going after a load of other uh, altcoins. So uh, Matic, um, well, there's loads of them, isn't it? It's quite a few. Uh, ADA, yeah. there's a couple of um, coins they decided to go for. Um, so, but apparently they're not going for Bitcoin or Ethereum at the moment. So I'm not saying that it's not a security, but um, it sounds like they're not going... For those uh, for those two key cryptocurrencies, so I thought it might be interesting to see what everyone else's thoughts on why 
they're not going for those particular coins. Is there any particular reason why? So going... didn't they leave the mound because of these hemming documents that were being released today because they didn't want to look like a fool if they've already declared Ethereum as not a security. So at the moment, they're keeping their mouth shut and they're not saying whether it is or it isn't. They haven't included them in it. Um, and then these documents were coming out today. But I'm not sure how that fared out then and what good it actually done for XRP because basically the document said that your man Hemming was advised not to say all the stuff that he was going to say about Ethereum not being a security because it's only going to lead to more unclarity in the market, which is exactly what it did. So I don't really know how that stands for the SEC. But in terms of other tokens that are not a security, would anybody like to chime in there and give their opinion on what they think is and isn't a security? Is there any tokens out there about Bitcoin and Ethereum that aren't securities? Yeah, I can I can weigh in on that. So I guess the, I think the SEC, they had a, a four point test, I think it's the Harry test or something like that. But basically, I think they were saying to be a security, it has to be an investment and it has to be an expectation of a profit. So any token or coin that's not something that we put money in expecting to for it to go up in value or expecting it to uh, to to return more than than what we put in, then that would be a token. But that would be a that would not be a security under their definition. So for example, I don't know, like in sub-Saharan Africa, you have M-Pesa, which is like mobile phone token. So mobile phone airtime, minutes of airtime as a token. So something like that, you know, you wouldn't expect to go up in value. It's just a it's just a token. So any sort of utility coin that's uh, exchangeable for a standard non-appreciating unit of value would be a non-security token. There's not that many around just because of the nature of the crypto market. But yeah, that sort of token, something that's a a, a ticket to something um, or a, a way, of, you know, it's a, a pass to a, a particular product or service that would not be a security. What about distribution of the token and how decentralized the distribution is? So Bitcoin isn't a security because it's totally distributed. Um, there was fair mining, blah, de, blah, de, blah. There's not one person in control. What about, is there any other tokens out there that people are looking at that are more distributed in a fairer way that would let be less of a security? Um, one that I've been looking at as being as being Coinos. I know some of you here would be familiar with Coinos because they have um they had this fair mint and they have the proof of burn system, but the team didn't even get any tokens. So there's no, but there is definitely nobody that owns it. There is a Coinos group, but they don't hold any tokens in that, and they're just there to kind of try and get projects developed on it. So they're not there to monetize from it themselves. Um, any other ones? It's a tricky one, isn't it? I'm trying to decide which isn't, which isn't. Fletch said an old one is Dash. I suppose um, then Dogecoin wouldn't be because Do Dogecoin is a fork of Bitcoin. What about Litecoin? Yeah, I was going to say Litecoin. Yeah, but um, it has gone up in value, hasn't it? And people do do put money into it on the basis of trying to get, you know, an ink an investment on it. I suppose more than anything else. But that's the trouble, isn't it? How, how do you define this? Quite difficult. I, I would mm -hmm. consider Litecoin, though. Yeah. I was actually going to make a point in terms of just like the definition thing that you were mentioning. So, like, I think that's one of the biggest issues is that it's really difficult to kind of define which cryptocurrencies fall under kinds of a commodities versus securities versus currency kind of uh, regulation standards, because then it becomes also an issue of jurisdiction and how different agencies kind of one define these different kind of technologies and these different coins. And therefore, how those different definitions attributed to these different kinds of coins is then going to affect legislation as a result. And so my understanding is that um, the SEC um, they're they're essentially charged with regulating currency trading, and so if they covered crypto trading as well as cryptocurrencies as uh, a form of deemed currencies, then uh, legislators and other regulators would have to come around to the idea that crypto should be considered a security, 
uh, considered like stocks, bonds, exchanges, so on and so forth. And then therefore it would fall under the jurisdiction of the SEC. However, the uh, different agency, the uh, Commodity Exchange Act, the CEA, they uh, view uh, cryptocurrencies as commodities, which actually changes the whole field, right? So that's one of the biggest challenges, I think, is really kind of like formalizing a definition that can be sort of evenly distributed not across different agencies and understood in order to create these kinds of un this understanding of this technology. I think then there's also a bit of a problem with the classification around the world in that Europe will have a different classification of securities to the US, which is going to lead for different types of regulations. Um, would anybody like, look, we're going to get regulation and we've started to see it come true. We've got MICA going on in Europe. We've got things happening uh, pretty fast in the UK about putting regulations together. What would people think about a more global approach to the regulation? John, I'm going to ask you that. Um, I'm not sure how that would work. Uh, I'm quite positive based on the UK of how the UK are looking to roll out regulations. I'm quite foolish about the way they seem to be doing things. Uh, Europe seem to be embracing it also but i just think with everything that's happening in america that at risk of being left behind i think something drastic needs to happen over that side of the pond but again just with the, the different tensions throughout the world and the fact that Asia, uh, what's come out of Hong Kong, and then the Chinese rolling out CBDCs. Everybody seems to be approaching this at a quicker pace than America is. So I think they could be at risk of being left behind unless there's a map change. But come back to your question on trying to get a worldwide agreement on this. I think that's a long shot given everything else that's happening on throughout the world at the minute. Yeah. Yeah, it would be difficult. So it would. Ricardo, do you have any opinion on any of this? Yeah. <clears throat> Hi everyone. Um I'm Ricardo, based in Berlin, Germany, originally from Brazil. And we are uh we are actually working on a couple of things related to, to what's being discussed here. Uh, I can talk a little bit about Brazil. We're, we're, we're more involved with Brazil at the moment and Latin America. So uh, it's interesting to, to hear what's been uh, said here uh, about U U US and UK. What's, what's happening in Brazil at the moment is there's the central bank and there's the uh, CVM, Comissão de Valores Imobiliários, um, that would be corresponding to something like the SEC. So there's these two entities and there's a uh, uh, they're trying to reach some sort of uh, um, agreement on how to regulate uh, blockchain and crypto at the moment, and specifically, more specifically, security token offerings, yeah, uh, STOs. And uh, there's uh, uh, both en both entities have been passing um, legislation on this. There's nothing. The, both entities, both the Brazilian Central Bank and the, the CVM, the Brazilian SEC, have uh, established sandboxes, re regulatory sandboxes, and they are working with the private sector, uh, with um, um, startups, both uh, national and global, international, to try to basically find out what works. And I think this is pretty, probably pretty similar to what's happening in other countries around the world as well. Um, yeah. So yeah kind of a short brief summary on, on what we've been uh, seeing in Brazil. Yeah, that's it. That's interesting because most notably we talk about Europe and we talk about the UK and we talk about the US and the developing nations, I think, have um, the most to gain from blockchain at the moment and cryptocurrency at the moment. And I think they're going to, 
in terms of users, they're going to lead the way forward. So they are. So it'd be nice to see them coming out with regulation. Just on the voting there, if you hop over to Lean Coffee Table, there is the option now to vote on this topic or to end the topic. So if you all want to take a second to vote at the moment, we've got two votes to one, three votes to one to extend the topic and continue on. So if anybody wants to hop in there with a vote. OK, I'll extend the topic on there for another three minutes because it is it is quite an interesting topic. Um, Nicole, have you any comments on this? Actually, I'm very new to the to the field, so I really have no idea. Sorry. So I'm just okay. observing for now. Have you any questions on what we're actually discussing? Does it does it um do you know what a security is and why this topic is very hot at the moment? Well, I know about security. Um there are terms that I'm I'm not sure, so I'm Googling while I'm listening to you guys. OK, well, look, feel free to jump in and stop us and say, hold on, what does that mean? Uh, or jump, throw a comment into the chat as well, that because lots of us here are uh, experienced and have been around a while and there is lots of new people as well. So don't be shy to stop and say, Ooh, what does that mean? OK, thank you, Paula. No problem. Fletch, what about yourself? What's your thoughts and opinions on this one? I kind of agree with what's already been said in that it will be the developing nations <clears throat> that will be most ben beneficial. So who, who will see the most benefit from crypto and probably will lead the way um, with regulations. And with regards to the US, it's, it's, it's a weird one because on one hand, your colleague was very right when he said um, they are lagging behind, but mm. the um, the conspiracy theories people they say well, Beansler's doing this deliberately to crash the financial system in order to bring in the CBDCs. <laughs> so um, it's I'm, I'm I'm a bit confused about the whole thing at the moment. But so it's very interesting to hear hear everyone else's opinion. Thank you, Paula. That's actually quite a good question to put to people on this, is that there is that conspiracy. Well, we don't know if it's a conspiracy theory or not, but a lot of us in the crypto sphere would automatically just get fed conspiracy stuff in our feed because that's the way the feeds work. Uh, does anybody else think that the US are purposely trying to like, I mean, we've got Fed now coming out really, really soon. So Fed now is an online payment system that countries can use between each other, which they're saying is not blockchain, but it can do transfers overnight, speed seconds. You don't need to wait on the SWIFT system and whatever. And that's the start of CBDCs in America and that this is a whole control thing for them to push out crypto and pull in CBDCs. Does anybody think there's truth in that? Certainly a strategy, isn't it? If you want to reduce the uh, the value of the market, and, uh, put people off in investing and try and reduce. It makes you wonder what's going on behind the scenes, you know. I, I do feel that it's uh, it's all been set up. You know, this has been set up a while ago, especially with the XRP case going on, and potentially the XRP case is going to win. So the SEC wants to start looking at something else. And there's a bit of a mirage, really, in anything else to... To cover up the hiccups on the on the on the XRP Mr. Um, case, but obviously that 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 finding hasn't been resolved yet. That case hasn't been resolved. But the SEC has actually well, Gary Gensler has actually stated that he believes that everything is a, um, a security apart from Bitcoin. Yeah, there's video footage of him from 2019 saying nothing is a security; they're all well decentralized. Yeah, he's saying the opposite. Stage. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's only America. It's not the rest of the world. Well, do you know that's what? That's a point. Yeah, that's a point that I've made quite a few times is that America is only one country. And nobody seems to have numbers on what portion of crypto is held by Americans. There doesn't seem to be a breakdown anywhere. That 
information doesn't seem to be available too much. I think that's partly because it's uh, not information that's volunteered, I don't think, because for most of America, they're not actually allowed to, to own crypto. Or, uh, so I can't see many, too many people putting their hands up saying I'm one of those who does, you know. Maybe that's yeah, and we went through periods of nobody in China being allowed to hold crypto as well. Like we've been here before. Who's going to ban it the most amount of times? Okay, yes. on this topic, just the votes coming in. There's no preference, and we have discussed it, discussed it for a couple of minutes. So what we do is we will move on to the next question. And how do I move these? Can we pick? three or four different tokens and explore their tokenomics. Okay. <clears throat> Who has an idea of a token that we can pull up and we can explore the tokenomics? Um, anybody want to volunteer to do the exploring of the tokenomics and to share it with everybody? Uh, I, uh, I'm involved in, well, it's going to sound like a promotional thing, <laughs> but um, I'm involved in a, a project that's been going on, uh, being developed for the last four or five years, just about to launch on exchanges. And it's an event ticketing uh, blockchain protocol, which um, has been regulated under European law. So uh, I, um, I'm not sure whether to, to, to uh, promote that or not, 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 not some, uh, uh, that's my, that's my quandary. I don't want you to want to talk these. about it from a tokenomics point of view, then please do. Um, yeah. And maybe it, try it, and look at it from an external person that would be reviewing sure. the tokenomics. Yeah. Have you the ability yeah. to share screen there, Paul? Okay. Sorry, could I ask if somebody could explain the definition of tokenomics? I keep hearing this word banded about. Thank you. Okay, so tokenomics is basically the economic factors involved with a cryptocurrency. Okay, so instead of saying economic, we say tokenomic when we're in crypto. So this would include things like how many coins are in circulation, how many coins are there in total, what's their total number of coins that they can issue, the price, the market cap, um. If all the coins haven't been distributed, how many more coins are there to be distributed? When will they be distributed? Like have half of them been sold to a, v, uh, a VC and are they going to be sold and unlocked at a certain period of time? Because that could impact the price. Um, and then what brings value? What's the revenue model that actually makes the token have any value at all behind it? Does that make Thank sense? Thank you. Okay. So, and yeah. I was going to say, this is actually the one I'm about to show you is, is a very good example of all of that, actually. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, shall I go onto their website and show the brand, et cetera? Yeah, do or, go ahead and share screen. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> it, what's, Just it's Fletch, interesting there's about a this. links dropped in there to the chat as well. So there is. Okay, go ahead, Paul. Are you able to share? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, to my mind, this is a very good example of um, of how blockchain technology can work uh, and um, how it works. Uh, and so, this is a, a an event ticketing uh, pr project uh, development. And what's interesting is that it combines um, NFTs, which um, is what the actual tickets uh, inevitably become. Um, but also with a community-based um, reward system, which is a separate token in itself. And it's that token that um, is supported by the profits that the company makes through its event ticketing side and which uh, develops its value from um, company profits. Uh, and in fact, it's a, it's a regulated um, virtual financial asset as well under Maltese law at this point in time. So um, does anybody want to ask any questions? that are relative to how that works because on the one hand you've got the ticket which is uh becomes the nft um you know each ticket is unique uh, to an individual and therefore by definition an nft uh, but then there's also um the community side whereby they can gain um rewards if you like and bonuses and so on through the tokens whereby they can buy merchandise and so on 
and, and, and extras and, and what have you through through uh, the token uh, side of things. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah that makes sense to me. Yeah, I've got a question. So I don't um, yeah, yeah so Paul, uh, I guess what problem is this solving? Is it kind of we all don't like Ticketmaster or something? What's the what's the main USP of this? It's a very good question because there are, as you probably know, major issues in that marketplace with, with scalping, as the Americans call it, or, or touting. Um, and in fact, many, many high profile, um, you know, pop stars and celebrities and people like that, um, uh, Taylor Swift, most notably Ed Sheeran, have been complaining bitterly about how bad Ticketmaster manages their uh, events and uh, how expensive the tickets, how much, how little control Ticketmaster have over the cost of tickets and so on. So yes, it's very much in the public sort of um, you know line of sight at the moment, particularly among people like that. Um, and, and this protocol is designed to overcome all of that, all, all of the challenges of um, uh, of uh, that marketplace, basically, in the secondary market that um, abuses it. And in fact, what you can do um, is you can obviously look at the white paper. It gives you much more information about this uh, particular project as well. So, how many tokens are there? Um, I'm, I, I'm just from memory. I think it's 270 million, but uh, obviously the white paper would detail that um, more. And what's more, the tokenomic yeah. plus proposition on this? What percentage of these were distributed, to, and in what way? Um, a very high percentage have been distributed or will be distributed. They're just about to go on exchanges um, over the coming weeks. So there's a, there's a uh, again, it's all in the white paper and I don't know exact numbers, but it's something like at least 70% of the tickets are, are, sorry, of the tokens are going to be available um, over time. Um, tickets will, or sorry, tokens will get burned as uh, they're used. Um, so again, it's a, it's a limited uh, number of uh, tokens available um, that will that sh should then increase in value as a result of that. Um, so you say they get burned when they're used. What are they used for? They're used within the community. So in other words, when a ticket is purchased, um, they purchase it with through the token. They and then the ticket itself is issued as an NFT, and so. Um, the uh, actually when they purchase a ticket they purchase it through the event organizer so the event organizer uses the platform to develop its uh, ticket requirement for its event um, the company takes a small uh, percentage of the cost of each ticket each ticket as it's purchased and then bonuses are applied to ticket holders um, using that token to enable them then to buy merchandise or they can trade they can simply buy the token to make purchases for merchandise and other bonuses and benefits within within the uh, ecosystem as well. And of course, it can be applied to things like um, ticketing for uh, obviously an event, but which could include the hotel accommodation, uh, meals that are associated with it, perhaps meals at the event as well. Um, so there's a whole ecosystem being developed behind the ticket itself. Um, which will be the tokenized, you know, the, the, the token will be used for all of that. Does that make sense? Okay, so does it, would it be correct in saying a token has been issued just in replace of cash, a user token instead of paying for it in cash? Uh, yes, um, and of course associated with an NFT, it's the NFT that is, becomes the unique um, solution to that, the problems in that market. And you're quite right, the token itself is used in place of cash for those transactions. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Does anybody have any questions on that in terms of the tokenomics? No? Yeah, yeah okay. just a question. Is there, yeah, is there any possibility that you can, uh, you can swap or yeah, you can exchange with other people. If you've got, you've got tickets for a particular event, you can exchange it with somebody else. Um, what's interesting about it is, that, I mean, that's part of the solution, if you like, one of the problems that exist at the moment. 
because then you can't control who the ticket was purchased by, who it's going to go to, where it can be resold to. Now, because all of that is controlled within the um, production of the NFT for that ticket, in other words, it is to a specific person. However, if that person wants to ha has alternative range, they can't go to the concert or uh, they simply decide that they don't want to go and they don't want their ticket any longer. They, they can resell their ticket back into the pool and uh, actually their ticket becomes the very next ticket that's sold from the central pool. Okay. So they, they can't sell it to somebody else themselves, basically. Okay, it goes back into a pool. Okay, any other questions on that? Okay, well, what I've done is I've brought it up Coin Gecko. So somebody shout out the name of a token to me and I'll bring the token up here and we'll go through for the people that are newer, some of the areas where you can find tokenomics information about a cryptocurrency. So say anyone to me. Pepe. Oh, wow. Moonbag. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pepe. Okay. Right then. Okay, if you go to CoinGecko, you can get tokenomics information, okay? Um, and we'll go through the basics of what they show you here. First of all, one of the good things about using a website like CoinGecko is that you can always get the direct links to things, the official links. And that's so important because you can click on the wrong link and get scammed at any time. So you have the contract information up here. Um, and when you go into the contract, there's certain information you can find out about the uh, token holders and stuff like that. And you can also get directly to their website. But in terms of tokenomics, I can't even say these numbers, they're so big. Okay, first of all, we start here with circulating supply, and that is how many of these tokens are there out there in the market at the moment? Okay, so the likes of Bitcoin, we know that there's only ever going to be 21 million Bitcoin, but some of them haven't yet been mined because they'd be mining for way into the future. So their circulating supply is lower than the 21 million, whereas with Pepe, we can see the circulating supply, the total supply, and the maximum supply are all already released. How many billion is that? 420 billion, is that what it is? Or trillion this stage? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So that's the circulating supply. The more of a token that there is, that's why like you see all these millions of zeros, because it, it's not scarce. OK, so that's one of the first things that it tells us. It also tells us that because it's already in circulation, the whole lot of it is already in circulation, that we're not going to see inflation. So like with Bitcoin, and I know people say Bitcoin is deflationary, but with Bitcoin, there's new Bitcoins mined every month. So there's inflation because there's new Bitcoins mined every month. In this case, there can be no inflation. Moving over to this side, we have the market cap and the market cap is the current price multiplied by your circulating supply. So the larger market, market cap tokens are usually the top 100 tokens listed in CoinGecko or Coin Marketplace and all these sort of places. Um, the larger the market cap, you have to be careful because market caps can be kind of pumped and stuff like that. The larger the market cap, the more people are generally invested in a token. But again, you'd want to check Etherscan or something like that to see maybe only two people hold it and they're trade rushing between themselves and they're inflating market cap like that. We also have, if we expand this market cap to fully diluted. Now, the further away from one this is, the more coins there are to yet still come onto the market. So we know this is one because there's no more coins to come onto the market for this. Therefore, the fully diluted value valuation is the same as the market cap. Um, a fully diluted market valuation of Bitcoin is going to be less than the current market cap because there's more Bitcoins to be issued out there. We also get the trading volume. Now on coin, uh, on CoinGecko, they have a tokenomics section, but they don't have tokenomics data for all tokens. And this will normally show, actually, if we go into Bitcoin, I think 
I think it's there for Bitcoin. It should be there for Bitcoin. So see you can see what there is. Okay, so when you click on the tokenomics tab, you are given details of the supply schedule. So when the token is going to be minted again, how much more of it is going to be minted. So we can see the red is the block rewards. And as we know, the block rewards half on every halving. Um, and this will be the Bitcoin supply going up this way. So it slows down because we're minting, I think at the moment, six and a half Bitcoin per block. And when we get the halving, that's going to go down to 3.25 or whatever it is per block. And that can continuously reduce down. Um, so if there's other stuff going on, Bitcoin is quite simple in terms of its tokenomics. It has a simple goal, and that is to reward miners for securing the network. Whereas other tokens have different goals. Uh, some of the goals may have been to raise funds in the first place. So they have a VC and you may see a cliff in here of when a VC is able to, to cash out and stuff like that. So that's where I go to start looking um, at tokenomics information. Um, I'm just going to go back there to lean coffee table. And if you want to take a vote on whether to extend this, topic or to continue it okay so we've two to extend topic no preference and end topic so we'll extend the topic for another three minutes um anybody else use anything else to start looking at tokenomics of a project P. Hey. No. I think you you hit it on the head there, really, Paula. Using Coin Gecko or or the other one, what is it? Um, Coin Market Cap. Coin Market Cap. The, yeah, the token tokenomics is one of the key things to have a look at in regards to the circulating supply, the total supply, maximum supply. You don't want to go into site which um, you know the uh, the organisation could dump a load more tokens onto the. Um, you know, out there to dilute the uh, the value of the coins, so you have to be careful. You know, obviously, it might be worth like looking at or... another one then. Uh, who would have Solana would have, I suppose, heavy VC funding, so that might be a good one to look at. If we go into the tokenomics tab on Solana, so obviously you can go directly to a white paper or to the company's website as well and be able to get details of their tokenomics. Okay, so the Solana tokenomics here is showing the allocation of SOL. So all of the SOL was issued and is locked up basically for different things. So we, there was a seed sale of 25%. So that's VCs, uh, a founding sale, another 20%. So we've got 45% there basically on private capital. Um, we then have the foundation owning 20%, the Solana Foundation owning 20% as well. 20% went to the team. Um, and we can see small amounts there, validator sales, and small amounts there as well. But if we go down, it should tell us how these release. Okay, so <laughs> we can see this is the calendar of release and when they're going to release the tokens. And this, this is really important because as Rob said, a VC could dump on you at any stage. If they hold 40% of a token and they decide we're out, they're going to dump on the market and could have a negative impact. So you can see here how things basically are moving out and the green one is staking rewards. So that's continuously growing because there'll be continuous staking. Um, there, is, there was a big cash out around there in November 22. We could see all they, these all took a big, jump up in November 22. I believe FTX are holding 8%. They were one of the venture capitalists that bought in. And that's due to unlock in 2025. Um, that will probably be the launch sale, but I don't see it being a big kick in there. But it is really worth, when you're looking at a project, making sure that there's solid fundamentals in terms of the tokenomics. What these don't show in terms of tokenomics are revenue models. 
and revenue models are quite important. So how do they plan on making money? Every business has to make money at the end of the day. And that's a little bit of a different investigation that you'd have to do, but it is equally as important and does definitely make up part of the tokenomics because if there's no money coming in, it can't add any value to things. So if you want to take a vote there on whether to extend the topic or end the topic. Okay, we've got end topic coming in. So we'll finish that topic. And I'll move that one over. Can I just say that was brilliant. Thank you, guys. It really explains Excellent. the tokenomics to me. Good, I'm good. I'm delighted, Fletch. Okay, I'll move the next question in. I'll give this five minutes. Does anyone feel any fear in holding crypto or buying crypto right now? That's a great question. Was that carried forward from last week or did somebody drop that in this week? Um, okay, I certainly have Go ahead, Paul. Said, certainly have no fear of buying um, you know, the top 10 right now because um, now is the best time. We're in, a, we're in a, you know, the, the end of perhaps a, uh, a bear market. So we've been in this market for so long, it's got to go up at some point. Um, that's my own feeling. Um, so I think now is the time to buy. It's, there's certainly no... Uh, there are one or two project projections that it may go down again. Um, but if, you know, if you're a long-term investor or a long-term hodler, as they call it, then I don't think you can really lose. We're probably looking at, at, at worst, perhaps another six months before we hit a major bull run. That's not my own opinion. Um, that's opinion based on what many, many uh, industry leaders are saying. So, but again, it's not it's not advice. I can't obviously give advice on that, but it's just a, yeah, just a none, of, none of this is financial advice. This is just a <laughs> chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so no fear of those, but of course you've got to do your homework and know what what your, what the token does what its potential is and make your own decision about that you know based on your information or the knowledge that you can acquire about a given token i think um i think everybody knows about uh, bitcoin now and ethereum and solana and one or two of these others that are you know major players in the field and i certainly don't think there's any risk in investing in those personally okay excellent Pragna, i'm going to put that question to you um would you have fear in holding your crypto right now? I suppose that question is probably based on the current climate with the market going down, everything that's going on in America. Is it making you more fearful? No, not at all. I'm holding, actually, I've got quite a lot of crypto at the moment. I'm buying crypto at the moment. And I'm just going to hold on to it. Because I think in about, I don't know, 12 to 18 months, it's going to go up and we're going to have a bull run. It's happened before roughly every four years so at the moment i'm stacking all my crypto good woman <laughs> not financial <laughs> advice <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm not giving financial advice this is what i'm doing yeah this yeah my, this is this is what my experience has showed me since i've been in the crypto business no so yeah currently i'm stacking and i have got various different cryptos Okay, and would you be more concerned because the Bitcoin dominance has gone up? Like Bitcoin hasn't been hit as hard with the latest news in terms yeah. of price as yeah. altcoins and other coins. have. Like some altcoins are lower than they're low in December and have taken another 20% hit and Bitcoin has moved by 3 or 4%. Yeah. To be honest, I'm not that worried about it. And Bitcoin is the king of all crypto. And to be honest, I don't, Think, um, I'm not worried. I know for a fact, I think it will go up. I can't say that 100% guaranteed, but my opinion, since I've been crypto, it has always gone up. Excellent. Excellent. But, but that's how I feel, but then maybe I'm a risk taker. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Admin, what about you? Can you jump in there, admin? Uh, it is a bit interesting topic for me because I'm also uh, thinking about like I would like to connect with uh, such uh, big 
bitcoins and talk on uh, type of topics so i just also thinking about to do some little investment in that and just wants to experience these things like how the market goes and uh, uh, so this is uh, really uh, uh, interesting for me like uh, how she express and i am also getting some positive energy like i can do it like i can, i should have to invest something in crypto <laughs> So, uh, so do you yes, hold okay. no crypto yet? No, no. Uh, right now, I didn't have, I didn't hold anything. But uh, okay. uh, my my colleagues and they they do have. But I was a bit fear on like how it is going on, like what will happen, and uh, the th- the thing. Uh, Paul said, uh, like this is just uh, an advice and whatever. <laughs> The, the thing is impacts on me like i i want to a small investment on it so if you guys do have any uh thing uh things in your mind like uh, this uh particular uh, uh bitcoin or uh any uh any coin is going uh well in market so you can give some suggestions or here <laughs> 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 is there anything anybody in particular is eyeing up at the moment? I let anybody jump in there on that one. Well, uh, like I said, I think you can go wrong with uh, Bitcoin and with Ethereum. Um, there is a lot of talk that uh, Ethereum might overtake Bitcoin, but again, that's speculation. Um, but Ethereum t- seems to be a very, very solid uh, token to uh, to invest in. But of course, um, whatever choice you make, always be prepared. Invest for the long term, not for the short term, because the market's so volatile that the day that you purchase mm-hmm. it, I'm sure we've all experienced this, mm-hmm. it could plummet to next to nothing. <laughs> and all of a sudden you think I've lost all this money. All you have to do is sit tight, hang on to it and just wait for it to go back up again, uh, because all indications are that it will recover and go way beyond uh, what it currently is at the moment. But again, not financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else want to jump in there on that one? I'm looking at AI tokens or gaming tokens. Um, so I think they will be the next big thing in the next bull run, um, as well as the traditional tokens such as Bitcoin and ETH. Um, I'm trying to balance my portfolio, um, which is very small, but um, balance it with risk. So I'm looking at some solid or blue chip tokens they call them now isn't that and yeah the riskier ones um and i dca in again not financial advice but i dca in a tiny amount each month i mean not more than 50 quid but it's just building up because i think we've got between 12 to 18 months before the actual bull hits um so um, I'm a small investor and hodling and buying is, is, is this is time to buy because it's so cheap. Um, it's I don't know if we have as long as 18 months in terms of it being in accumulation phase as in us, you know, yeah. buying little yeah. bits now. I don't know if we'd have as long as 18 months. I think by 18 months and obviously not financial advice. I think by 18 months we'd be back to previous all time highs and it's only after we reach previous all-time highs that we have all these retail people coming in. The guys in mm. the streets are talking about it. And then you get this supersonic blow-off top after that. Um, yeah. So you'd want to be accumulating yeah. before we get to get there. Oh, oh absolutely. But um, I, it's just things I've been hearing of because of the US and what they're doing and... Um, how their economy is going and this and the other um if it does go to another recession or all these ifs buts or maybes they're thinking that because um the us is the global reserve um, currency isn't it so it has such an impact on other things so um if they do go into a bad patch and it and it's looking that way at the moment mm. um this this um uh, bear market could last a bit longer than the the, the original twelve months. What people were looking at, at the beginning of the year, if you see what I mean. But that's just my thoughts. 
Yeah, well, the micro factors always kick in. And one of the things, and I dropped it into Telegram earlier on today, that this week we've got the CPI news out. We have the interest rate news out in the States and in Europe. And they're all going to impact the price in short term, making this week fairly choppy. Um, but I wonder, has they, has it all been priced in now at this stage? It's hard oh, to see. know. Um, yeah. Paula? <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, that's me here. So uh, it might be worth for the, for the people who are just getting started to mention the relationship between all-time high, all highs and Bitcoin halving. I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with this also. Yeah. Go ahead, Ricardo. Will you please do explain to everyone? Well, not, not, nothing in detail. It's just uh, uh, usually uh, every couple. So uh, crypto happens in cycles. Usually yeah, the evolution of the market happens in cycles or it used to happen in cycles. Now it's getting more uh, flexible. So every few years, um, there's something called Bitcoin halving, halving uh, which is basically uh, the amount of Bitcoin that miners get by mining uh, decreases by half. And usually uh, this used to happen every four years or so. And what, what usually happens is a few months after this happening, ha uh, halving, there's the, there's the all-time high. Yeah, this is the tradition. This has been changing lately, but... Uh, it doesn't change. It hasn't changed so much in the last, I don't know, 12 years or so. So it's it's worth it. And the next halving is going to happen in April uh, 2024, April next year. So there's a kind of expectation that sometime by the middle of next year or second semester, early, so beginning of second semester next year, that could be, uh, there could be a potential all-time high. Again, this is absolutely no financial advice. <laughs> It, and it seems to tie in nicely this time around with, uh, like, talk about coincidences, the U.S. election and the change in power that could, could happen, the change in positions, the change in seats, that traditionally in election years, everybody's up for fighting their seat. Everybody wants to protect their seat. OK, so they all want a good economy. They all want to start. They don't want to be going into this saying, oh, the economy is shit, vote for me. They all want goodness. So they'd be propping things up. I wouldn't be surprised if there's more helicopter money and all handed out because of all the elections and just to prop up everything. Um, and that coincides nicely with the timing of the halving being in April and then the bull run happening later on in the year, because it's around November 24 that the elections are on in the States. Yeah. And so, right. Sorry, go ahead. Um, just one, one, a second comment here. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone else is looking into this, but there's, a, there's quite a bit of talk about what's been happening in terms of DeFi uh, on blockchain on uh, Bitcoin, yeah, which is something that is quite new. Some of the tokens, altcoins, have gone up seven hundred percent, eight hundred percent, and people are talking about potentially a summer of Bitcoin DeFi. Yeah, this is interesting. Uh, Two thousand twenty or twenty one was the summer of DeFi on Ethereum, and now people are talking about a summer of Bitcoin DeFi tokens like Ordinals, things like this. The first experiences of uh, DeFi on Bitcoin. This has been quite hot lately. Again, absolutely. yeah, we were we actually done a session on that in the Dublin meetup group last oh, week. Right. Um, oh. so we've we've a different audience here uh this week, but we went through the RC20 tokens in detail. Uh we actually have one minted, we have one in minting out there called dollar LRN for learn, obviously. Um, feel free to go and grab yourself some. It's still on a free mint, Ricardo. Not financial advice. <laughs> but how do you get? Um, how how do you mint these ordinals? How do you get them? That was my question. I just I'm so excited about this, and I have not a clue how to do it. Well, do you know what? But it's actually past time. It's three minutes past eight now, so we're not going to go through it now. But Fletcher, are you in the Telegram group? Uh, not as yet. No. OK, I've dropped a link there in the chat into the Telegram group. OK, um, I have plenty of content there on ordinals and BRC20s and inscriptions and stuff that I can pin your way. And then you can come Thank back you. to me if you have any questions. But maybe we should put it down for a topic again because we hadn't discussed it in the UK group. There's so much going on on Bitcoin 
Um, it's super exciting. You probably see me smile as Ricardo was <laughs> talking about the DeFi summer on Bitcoin. I'm all in. It's the Bitcoin summer. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Well, look, on Would that, we are going to end this evening. Was somebody else going to jump in with something? Oh, I just wanted to ask, um, how does the whole ordinal work and how does that whole minting process work? Um, I'm feeling you, I've heard about that concept. Um, in Cape Town, yeah. there's not much conversations happening around that. It, there's quite a huge gap in that, unfortunately. But yeah, how does that go? What, like, how does the whole ordinal minting process work? So there's different things. There's ordinals and there's inscriptions and then there's stamps. So basically ordinals or BRC20 or no, hold on, that's inscriptions. Ordinals are pieces of artwork that are minted onto the blockchain, actually minted into the blockchain, not a pointer. Uh, inscriptions are basically JSON data that's inscribed into a Satoshi on the blockchain. And then stamps use a different algorithm as well for a base 64 converter for putting the images onto the blockchain but p are you in our telegram group hi uh, yes i am um excellent well, do and what i'll do is afterwards i'll pull out the resources that i have or actually i'll even just share the link to last week's dublin replay um and if you go to the second half of that i go through a lot of how to mint them and all that sort of stuff. Um, and we can put it down. I'll have a chat to Simon because he's the general host usually for this evening for the UK group. And if you are interested, um, I can get a session going over in the UK group as well on BRC 20s and ordinals and stamps and BRC 721s and stable coins on Bitcoin and layer twos on Bitcoin and all that sort of stuff, the exciting stuff. <laughs> interesting yeah so um there's <laughs> ordinal mintings and how do you get alerts for this type of mintings be honest with you uh or just keeping an eye on um unistat and the new listings that haven't fully minted out because they're free mints when you put them up when somebody deploys them you mint them for free and it's only when they're minted out that then there's a fight for them in the market and the price goes up. It's super exciting. I'll drop you all the resources. Okay. I'd, I'd love to hear more about that in, in another meeting. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. I'd appreciate it. Well, that's what we'll do. We'll schedule, we'll schedule a chat on all of that for the, the next UK group. Um, but in the meantime, because it is now 10 past eight, I'm going to let you all go. I'd like to thank you all very much for this evening. It was super interesting. We had some great discussions and great inputs from everybody. Anybody that didn't get to talk this week or um, put a question in, I hope you will come back. We're back here in two weeks time. If you're looking for a meetup every week, we have the Dublin meetup with the Irish meetup, which is also online. That goes out on a Thursday. But if you're in the Telegram group, you'll get access to all of the meetings through the Telegram group as well. So have a lovely evening, everybody. Enjoy the weather, and I will see you all next week. Thanks, Paul. Take it easy. Thanks, everyone. See you, John. Bye. See you, Rob. Good evening, you. Take care. See Thank you, Paul. You. See you, Ricardo. See you, Pragna. See you, Fletch. Bye. Thanks very much, Bye. Fletch. Bye. Bye. <laughs> see, see you, Nadia. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank bye you now. So much. Bye bye. Bye now, Pragna. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, admin. Bye now. Bye-bye, everybody.